I have a list of quotes that I think indicate that Donald Trump is opposed to democracy and wants to become a dictator. I've found 11 quotes of Trump praising other dictators for how they govern their countries, including Xi Jinping of Communist China, Vladimir Putin of Russia, and Kim Jong-un of North Korea. I've written down four times Trump has threatened to prosecute and lock up his political opponents, and I have some other quotes of his that show that he desires unrestricted power. Let's start by looking at six times Donald Trump praised Xi Jinping, the oppressive dictator of communist China. In July 2017, soon after a jailed human rights activist died in China, Trump said this of Xi Jinping. He is a very talented man. I think he's a very good man. He loves China, I can tell you. He loves China. He wants to do what's right for China. If he loves China so much, why does he imprison and kill Chinese people who disagree with him? If he wants to do what's right for China, why doesn't he hold elections, allowing the Chinese people to vote for a government and for policies of their choice? It's because dictators, like Xi Jinping, don't care about what their people want. In March 2018, China abolished the two-term limit for the president. Trump then said in a speech to Republican donors, he is now president for life. President for life. No, he's great. And look, he was able to do that. I think it's great. Maybe we'll have to give that a shot someday. He literally praised Xi Jinping for establishing himself as a permanent dictator of China. That's something that you, as the American president, should condemn because it is oppressive. You shouldn't be saying, it's great, I think it's great. And he shouldn't be joking about the possibility of making himself president for life, as he did here. Now, in April 2019, Trump said this at a dinner about President Xi. Xi said, but I am not king, I am president. I said, no, you're president for life, and therefore you're king. He said, huh, he liked that. I get along with him great. Why is Trump bragging about getting along great with a communist who made himself president for life? In September 2022, Trump said this at a rally while talking about Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. They are smart. He rules with an iron fist. 1.5 billion people. Yeah, I'd say he's smart. Wouldn't you say he's smart? In July 2023, Trump said this to Fox News. Think of President Xi. Brilliant guy. He runs 1.4 billion people with an iron fist. Smart, brilliant, everything perfect. There's no one in Hollywood like this guy. And in July 2024, Trump said this at a rally. He is a brilliant man. He controls 1.4 billion people with an iron fist. How do you think Chinese people, whose family members have been forcibly disappeared by the Chinese government, feel about him calling Xi Jinping brilliant? When you are talking about the brutal oppression of a billion people, you should condemn it, not praise it. Like when you're talking about ISIS beheadings, you should say it's bad, not smart. When you're talking about South African apartheid, you should say it's bad, not smart. But when Trump talks about a communist dictatorship, he says it's smart and brilliant, but not bad. He doesn't condemn it. Let's look at four times Donald Trump praised Kim Jong-un, arguably the world's most oppressive dictator. While president, Trump said this to Fox News in June 2018 about Kim. He is the head of a country, and I mean he's the strong head. Don't let anyone think anything different. He speaks, and his people sit up at attention. I want my people to do the same. In North Korea, you get shot or imprisoned or enslaved if you voice any opposition to the government. So they listen to everything Kim Jong-un says because they are terrified of him. He demands absolute loyalty. And Trump should not be saying that he wants the same kind of obedience and loyalty as Kim Jong-un. In February 2019, Trump said this at a meeting with Kim Jong-un. I think you will have a tremendous future with your country. A great leader. Again, North Korea has the worst human rights record in the world. I wouldn't call that great leadership by Kim Jong-un. Before becoming president, Trump said this about Kim Jong-un at a rally in January 2016. You've got to give him credit. How many young guys, he was like 26 or 25 when his father died, take over these tough generals, and all of a sudden, you know, 
It's pretty amazing when you think about it. How does he do that? He goes in, he takes over, he's the boss. It's incredible. He wiped out the uncle, he wiped out this one, that one. I mean, this guy doesn't play games. In the same month, he said this to Fox News. It's amazing that a young guy would go over and take over. You know, you would have thought that these tough generals would have said, no way this is going to happen when the father died. So he's got to have something going for him because he kept control, which is amazing for a young person to do. So he thinks that Kim deserves credit for taking over undemocratically. Kim wasn't elected to power by his people. It's not much different from an absolute monarchy. So he just became leader after his father died. And Trump mentioned the fact that Kim had his political rivals, like his uncle, executed. And Trump doesn't say it's horrible or evil or disgusting. He says it's incredible. Kim deserves credit and he has something going for him. So Trump has not indicated that he is against North Korea's brutal, undemocratic system. Next, let's look at an interview Trump had with MSNBC News in December 2015. The interviewer said this about Russian dictator Vladimir Putin. He's also a person who kills journalists, political opponents, and invades countries. Obviously, that would be a concern, would it not? Trump responded, he's running his country, and at least he's a leader, unlike what we have in this country. In the same interview, Trump said, I've always felt fine about Putin. I think he's a strong leader. He's a powerful leader. So when the interviewer brings up the fact that Putin violently suppresses opposition and kills journalists, the first thing Trump thinks to say is, he's running his country, he's a leader at least. No, a good leader does not murder his own people for disagreeing with him. Trump said Putin was running his country while Obama was not. Actually, both of them were running their countries. Obama was just running a richer and more democratic country, while Putin was governing a poorer and more totalitarian country. Trump says here he feels fine about Putin. Always felt fine about a guy who locks up his political opponents and has absolute power. I have never seen Trump condemn Putin's dictatorial rule as savage or barbaric or horrible. He always just compliments it and says Putin is tough and strong and powerful. So he likes ruthless dictators and thinks they're cool. So other than praising oppressive foreign leaders, what else has Trump said that indicates that he might want to be a dictator? Well, Donald Trump has said that he will be a dictator only on day one, he has called for the termination of the Constitution, and he has said that presidents must have full immunity from prosecution. In December 2022, Trump wrote this in a social media post in reference to the 2020 election. A massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. The Constitution limits the powers of the government. When dictators seize power in military coups, they very often suspend the Constitution. In January 2024, Trump posted this, in all caps, A president of the United States must have full immunity, without which it would be impossible for him or her to function properly. Even events that cross the line must fall under total immunity, or it will be years of trauma trying to determine good from bad. All presidents must have complete and total presidential immunity, or the authority and decisiveness of a president of the United States will be stripped and gone forever. No one is above the law, not even political leaders. This is a fundamental principle of democracy. But Trump believes that if he is president, you shouldn't be able to prosecute him for crimes he might commit. I have a solution. Maybe if you're president, you should just not be committing crimes. But Trump's solution is that he should be allowed to commit crimes without being punished. And in December 2023, during an interview with Fox News, the interviewer asked this to Trump. Under no circumstances, you are promising America tonight you would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Trump said, except for day one. So day one is the day he would consider abusing power as retribution against his opponents. Trump went on to say, I love this guy. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 
other than day one. We're closing the border and we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that, I'm not a dictator. So first of all, drilling and closing the border has nothing to do with what the interviewer asked. He asked about, will you abuse power to go after political opponents? That's what a dictator is. It's not someone who drills and closes the border. It's someone who abuses power to get their opponents locked up. Now, Trump said here that he'll only be a dictator on day one, and he won't be a dictator after that. Don't trust anyone who says that. A lot of dictators say that they will only be a dictator for a short period of time, but they'll give up their absolute power eventually. For example, communists like Vladimir Lenin claimed that they needed to establish a one-party dictatorship temporarily, right? Temporarily. But once they fully achieve socialism, then they will abolish the one-party state. Turns out they lied, and those dictators just remained in power until they died. If someone tells you they're going to be a dictator temporarily, like Trump, don't believe them. People who want unlimited power want it for an unlimited amount of time. Now, you might think what Trump said was a joke, but why would a politician who is genuinely committed to democracy joke about maybe being a dictator? Do Biden and Kamala make this many jokes about being an absolute ruler? No, they don't. If they did that, then Republicans would never stop screaming about it. But when Trump makes multiple anti-democracy statements, Republicans want you to forget about that. In an August 2023 interview with Glenn Beck, Trump said that if he is president again, he will lock up his political enemies. In a November 2023 interview with Univision, Trump said he might prosecute political opponents if elected in 2024. In a July 2024 interview with Newsmax, he floated the idea of imprisoning his political opponents. And in September 2024, Trump threatened, in a social media post, to jail his political opponents if re-elected. Very clearly authoritarian stuff. Trump went so far as to say this in a November 2023 speech. We pledge to you that we will root out the communists, Marxists, fascists, and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country that lie and steal and cheat on elections. When Trump says communists and radical left, He's including the Democratic Party under that broad description, even though the Democrats are anti-communists. But he refers to the Democrats as the radical left. And so when he says, we will root out the radical left, he is saying he will root out his political opponents, the Democrats. Also, comparing them to vermin is very disturbing because he is literally dehumanizing his opponents. So in conclusion, I believe that it's very clear that Trump's rhetoric indicates that he has a strong disdain for democracy and is really into the idea of ruling America as a dictatorship. If you look at each of these quotes just in isolation, it might not seem all that bad. But if you look at all of these pretty authoritarian quotes, there is clearly a pattern. A pattern I'm not so sure you should like. I don't see how you can see one man say all of these things and not think that he wants to be a dictator. I think it's pretty clear. This is why people say that Trump is a threat to democracy. So please, do not vote for and give power to a guy who very openly and casually says that he wants to abuse all that power. Once a dictator comes to power, it is often very difficult to get rid of him. Once democracy falls, it is not easy to restore.